This is Daniela White with Urban Christian News Network. Thank you for joining us on this Sunday, December 15, 2013. Here are the top 10 news stories that you need to know about right now. First today, according to Reuters, opponents of Syrian President Bashar al-Assad have been at an impossible disadvantage since the start of the Syrian conflict because the United States and Great Britain refused to help them, an influential Saudi Arabian prince said on Saturday. The United Nations and Great Britain suspended non-lethal aid to northern Syria on Thursday after reports that Islamic Front, a union of six major rebel groups, had taken buildings belonging to the Free Syrian Army's Syrian Military Council on the border with Turkey. Former Saudi intelligence chief Prince Turkey bin Fazal criticized the decision, saying the two countries had left the moderate FSA to fend for itself. Saudi Arabia and Qatar are the main backers of the main opposition, Syrian National Coalition, and the FSA, which they have aided with weapons, training, money, and military intelligence in the fight against Assad's government. Assad is backed by Iran, which struck a preliminary deal on with world leaders in November to limit sanctions relief for more international oversight of its nuclear program. Western countries have held back from giving heavy weapons such as anti-tank and missile launchers for fear that they could fall into the wrong hands. Second today, according to Reuters, U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry described North Korea's Kim Jong-un as reckless and insecure after the execution of the leader's powerful uncle and said that Kim's actions underscored a need for a unified stand against Pyongyang's nuclear program. The execution of Jang Song Thaek, considered the second most powerful man in the secretive country, showed why China, the United States, and other countries must work together to limit North Korea's nuclear weapons development, Kerry said in the interview on ABC's This Week program aired on Sunday. North Korean state media on Friday reported the execution of Jang. North Korea said earlier it had stripped Jang of its power and positions and accused him of criminal acts including mismanagement of the state financial system, womanizing, and alcohol abuse. North Korean politics are virtually impenetrable from outside and Jang also could have been purged over a falling out with Kim or other personal reasons. Kerry said of Kim, it tells us a lot about, first of all, how ruthless and reckless he is, and it also tells us a lot about how insecure he is to a certain degree. The insights that we have tell us that he is spontaneous, erratic, still worried about his place in the power structure, and maneuvering to eliminate any potential kind of adversary or competitor, and does so, obviously, ruthlessly. The top U.S. diplomat in some of the most detailed remarks of a U.S. official since the news on Friday said the execution was not the first under Kim's rule and pointed to the urgency of addressing the North Korean nuclear state. Third today, according to the Orlando Sentinel, thousands of the faithful gather to sing, cry, and laugh, but most of all to remember a man, not for how his life ended, but his impact on others while he lived. On Saturday, thousands of supporters gathered for a special service to remember megachurch founder Isaac Hunter for his magnetic way of connecting with people and his gift of delivering powerful spiritual messages. Churchgoers from his former congregation at Summit Church in Orlando and those from his father's sprawling Northland, a church distributed, gathered in Northland Sanctuary in Longwood to remember his legacy. The popular but troubled leader died from a self-inflicted gunshot wound on Tuesday. On Saturday, mourners sang contemporary hymns and heard moving tributes about Hunter from those who knew him well. Hunter is survived by his wife Rhonda and their three young children. Fourth today, according to Capital FM All Africa News, the death toll from Saturday's Matutu explosion in Pengani rose to six after two of the blast casualties succumbed to injuries in the hospital. Nairobi Police Chief Benson Kibu told Capital FM News that 30 others remain admitted, both at the referral hospital and at the Guru Nanak Hospital. Kibu said, we have lost two of the victims in the hospital where about 30 others are still admitted. We now have six people dead out of that incident. He said detectives were interrogating a suspect picked up from the scene soon after the incident, 
although he could not immediately link him directly to the blast. The bus was headed to town from Eastland when the explosion went off about 5.45 p.m., causing an accident pileup of six vehicles which rammed on one another after the explosion went off. An emergency official who helped take victims out of the bus after the blast said ten of them were in critical condition when they were pulled out. Fifth today, according to the Associated Press, an Egyptian criminal court convicted three Christians on Saturday of killing a Muslim man. A judicial official and the state news agency said in a dispute that left nine people dead in some of the year's worst sectarian violence. Six Christians died in the clashes which took place in a small town just outside Cairo in April, but no one was arrested or convicted for their killings, according to lawyers. In its ruling, the criminal court of Kualubia province sentenced one Christian man, Hani Farouk Awad, to life imprisonment and two others to 15 years for the killing of a Muslim resident of Kosus, where the violence took place. Nine Muslims were sentenced to up to five years for vandalizing Christian properties, while 32 were acquitted. He was speaking on condition of anonymity because he was not authorized to speak to reporters. Egypt's Christians, who make up about 10% of the country's population, have long complained of discrimination and sectarian strife. Usually fueled by hate speech from religious extremists, attempts to build new houses of worship, or interfaith love affairs. Six today, according to CNN, a blustery snowstorm sweeping the northeast wreaked havoc on highways across the region and disrupted air traffic throughout the country before beginning to make a quick exit to the northeast on Sunday. The storm is expected to spare major metropolitan areas like Boston and New York on Sunday, but some areas in Maine and along the U.S.-Canada border could see as much as 14 inches of snow, according to the National Weather Service. The good news for New Englanders and New Yorkers was that the storm was quickly moving out of the northeast. Conditions were already improving across the region on Sunday morning, but a winter storm warning touches parts of four states. Many areas in New Hampshire, Vermont, and Maine, as well as some in New York around the Great Lakes, could see one to three inches of snow on Sunday. By early Sunday, 300 flights into, out of, or within the United States were canceled, according to FlightAware. Highway traffic may be treacherous, with the problem compounded by high winds. CNN affiliate WCVB-TV reported that Massachusetts expects to use 10,000 tons of salt and 2,000 vehicles during the storm. Seven today, according to the Christian Post, Franklin Graham, the president of the nonprofit Samaritan's Purse, joined project organizers, local families, and survivors of Hurricane Sandy at one of New York City's major airports this week to personally send off more than 60,000 gifts to some of Typhoon Haiyan's most venerable victims in the Philippines. The evangelist and son of the Reverend Billy Graham was flanked by young singers of the Christian Heritage Academy and a loaded Boeing 474 over his, over his shoulder as he thanked participants during the send-off ceremony at Hangar 19 at John F. Kennedy International Airport. Graham told the Christian Post in an interview, it's about letting the children of the world know that God loves them and God hasn't forgotten about them. His Samaritan's Purse International Relief Organization has been delivering emergency aid to the Philippines after Typhoon Haiyan forced more than 3.9 million residents to flee their homes. The powerful November 8th typhoon has killed at least 6,000 people and injured more than 27,000. The organization's annual Operation Christmas Child Outreach will be delivering shoeboxes stuffed with goodies and essentials to thousands of Filipino children to let them know that Christians on the other side of the world are praying for them and contributing to their needs. Eighth today, according to the Christian Post, both presidents, George W. Bush and Barack Obama, have been inconsistent in their obligations to fulfill the requirements of the International Religious Freedom Act. Robert P. George, McCormick Professor of Jurisprudence at Princeton University, argued in his Leland Award Lecture on Religious Liberty. 
The Southern Baptist Convention's Ethics and Religious Liberty Commission presented George the award on Friday for his advocacy for religious liberty. Under IRFA, George noted the executive branch is supposed to conduct an annual review of religious freedom around the globe and designate nations that engage in systematic, ongoing, and egregious violations of religious freedom as countries of particular concern. Once they receive that designation, sanctions can be placed upon them for religious freedom violations. George is now chair of the United States Commission on International Religious Freedom, which was created by, R by IRFA to make policy recommendations to Congress, the Secretary of State, and the President. Nine today, according to Reuters, Iran will continue nuclear negotiations with world powers in Geneva, despite measures taken by the U.S. targeting several companies and individuals for supporting Tehran's nuclear program, Iranian Foreign Minister Mohammad Javad Zarif said on Sunday on his Facebook page. The United States on Thursday blacklisted 19 additional companies and people under sanctions aimed at preventing Iran from obtaining the capability to make nuclear weapons. Iran says its program is purely peaceful. Zarif said, adding the, Zarif said the Americans have taken improper measures in the last few days and we have given the appropriate response to them after considering all aspects of the issue. He added that the response will be a proper, calculated, purposeful, and smart. Iranian negotiators halted nuclear talks in Vienna on Thursday to return to Tehran for consultations after Washington's new measures. Tenth and finally today, according to Newsy.com, reporters learned today that 17-year-old Claire Davis was the only victim of Friday's Centennial Colorado school shooting carried out by her former classmate. Davis, a senior at Arapahoe High School, was sitting by the door with a friend when the shooter, 18-year-old Carl Pearson, entered the school with a shotgun and fired. Arapahoe County Sheriff Grayson Robinson told reporters that Davis was shot at point-blank range and suffered severe head trauma. Although Davis was upgraded from serious to critical condition after surgery at a local hospital, her father told KMGH that she is not doing very well. A day after the shooting, investigators are trying to pinpoint a motive as to why Pearson would want to shoot and possibly kill members of the Arapahoe High School community. Investigators say only 80 seconds elapsed between the time Pearson entered the school and the time he took his own life. In that time, the Denver Post writes that he fired his gun in Davis's face, ignited a Molotov cocktail that set bookshelves in the library on fire, and then committed suicide. That's today's top 10 news stories. You can read these stories and more at urbanchristiannewsnetwork.com. As you go throughout this day, keep this word in mind. Jeremiah 33.3 3 says, Call unto me, and I will answer thee, and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. God loves you, he always has, and he always will. He loves you so much that the Bible says in John 3.16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. If you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, why don't you get to know him today? Just believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died, was buried, and rose by the power of God for you. Pray and ask him to come into your heart today, and he will. Romans 10.13 says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Thanks so much for listening. I'm Daniela White with Urban Christian News Network. May God bless your day.